Thank you. Rosalind Khan, obstacles to opportunity. Obstacles to opportunity, Rosalind Khan. Madam Toastmaster and fellow guests, how many of you have ever had a bad day? I mean, one of those really horrible days. Well, I can't see you, but I'm sure you all have. Well, I like to call these things as obstacles. In my life, I'd like to begin like this. When I was very young, not so young, not as a baby, as crying, just a matter of 13 years old, I was in my gym class and I was running and we came in the locker room and they asked us to stand over and bend our knees. And as I bent my knees, all the rest of the kids got to go by. But when it came to my turn, they said, hold your horses. And they told me I needed to go see the nurse. And I went in her office and she wrote me a note and said, you need to go take this to your doctor. They made me go see an orthopedic surgeon. And the orthopedic surgeon said to a 13 year old, you're to follow these instructions very carefully. How many of you know 13 year olds that follow anything you tell them? None that I know. And that was the same with me. So time went on, two years later, I was running in my gym class and I just happened to run over a rock when suddenly that spinal curve doubled. And there was even more of a limp as I was going ahead and walking and that curve had gotten worse. They sent me to the doctor and the doctor said, I'm sorry, we're gonna have to put you in a brace. Now, I don't know if you know what a brace is like, but they're really uncomfortable. You see this waist, they squeeze it as tight as they can till you can hardly breathe. <gasps> and, and, and when I could finally get used to it, sleeping in it, and beyond taking it off from the shower or the pool, they said, it didn't work. We're gonna have to operate on you. And so there I was in the operating room. And I tell you, the pain was nothing compared to my friends and my peers. You see, I knew all these people since junior high. And suddenly, I was a different person and I, I learned this very important skill to close out the pain, to show no signs, whatever was bothering me. Years later, I was in a professional development group and they said, Rosalind, tell us what's going on. What are you feeling? I can't. When I was young, I learned to hold that pain inside so no one could see. But it's okay, Rosalind, you've got to tell us. Well, sometimes in life, I still hold it in and still keep it inside. But fast forward to the adult life. I decided after a year traveling the world, promoting cultural understanding that I wanted to work with young kids. And so I got a job as an emergency credential teacher. And in that, I had this third grade class. On a good day, they were phenomenal. And on a bad day, you wish they could have been better. Well, one day they were standing out for recess and I simply told this student, just like this, could you move a little closer in the line? And she took this and said, I went like this and left a permanent mark in her arm that never was. And she lied. And they took me out of the classroom. And they put me in an office where my job was moving paper clips, one after another after another. And during that time, I was able to gather 50 letters that I took to the LA Board of Education. And when they looked over their letters, they looked at me and said, there can't be anything. There must be a mistake. You're cleared. You're out of here. As I walked out that door, I made a mental note. I may say goodbye to the third graders, but I'd be back. And so I decided to enter the area of college. And in college, I had students who went on to be champion speakers, even when I had my arm in my cast and I couldn't write. I said to them, I know you will win this because if you can overcome your anxiety of public speaking, it's not here that you need to worry about. 
it's here. The words I say can still speak. The intelligence still comes through. And from one speaker to the next, to the next, at all the schools I went to, they all became champion speakers. It was absolutely amazing. Well, as time went on, I was teaching for over 20 years. And in those 20 years, I became the best teacher of the entire college. And I was so excited. At the end of the semester, they said, bye-bye. And what happened during that time is I got this idea one day that I should start painting. And as I began painting, one of my friends said to me, you're quite talented. I think you could be the next impressionist painter. And I thought to myself, wow, that's amazing. Taking all that pain and agony and putting it to paint. And believe it or not, when I left the college teaching, I began teaching as a substitute. And in one of my classes, they were teaching kids how to paint. And they used the example of Van Gogh, almost like the picture in back of me. It's amazing how we take these obstacles and we turn them into opportunities, whether it was my running and the high school and the pain and the anxiety or getting the best teacher and then becoming a substitute teacher. And recently I had some information that was quite damaging to me. And what did I do? I turned back to my painting. And I painted these most beautiful pictures. If you go to my Facebook book, rosalindoncotton.com, you might see example of some of those, or maybe on TikTok, because obstacles aren't really bad things. They're just opportunities that we can improve ourselves. So remember, the next time you're down and out and you're thinking, poor me, remember this speech saying, yes, you can turn those obstacles into Marvelous opportunities, Madam Toastmaster.